I'd like to follow up on a couple of um, Congressman Schrader's remarks and uh, questions. Just to kind of nail down uh, the effect of, uh, of the flu versus the bird flu, uh, Dr. Shushat, what, can you give me a, just how many people were affected with the bird flu? And you said this is going to be less than the bird flu? The principal dif there are two <clears throat> principal differences between the avian flu, bird flu that we've been talking about uh, for the past few years and the 2009 H1N1. One difference is that the bird flu strain, H5N1, um, was very lethal. About two-thirds of people who got that infection die from it. That's just extraordinarily lethal. And the H1N1 2009 strain is not of anywhere near that magnitude lethality. On the other hand, the H5N1 bird flu strain that we were talking about did not acquire the ability to spread easily person to person. Almost all of the cases that we have, it's several hundred cases that we've had since 2003, have been animal to human, bird to human. Very, very few, probably a couple, that were human to human. Whereas virtually everything that we're seeing with the 2009 H1N1 is extremely efficient person to person spread. So that bird flu strain, fortunately, has not become pandemic, but it's very, very severe. The H1N1 strain, has become pandemic. It's very easily spread, person to person, spreading around the world. Fortunately, it doesn't have that severity or lethality that the bird flu strain had or that the 1918 strain had. That's really good news right now because we think we can manage this with treat, you know, prompt treatment of people who are at risk with antivirals and that we're very close to having a vaccine to prevent and, and mitigate disease. Okay. But so the lethality and transmission are the two big differences there. Okay. Uh, Mr. McGraw, with regards to Homeland Security, are you monitoring other countries where this is popping up? Now, obviously, you test, some folks have testified here with regards to the southern part of the hemisphere, much more prevalent. Uh, are, are, are you monitoring it? And if so, are you going to restrict travel between those countries if you see a, a problem with it being exported to our country? Yeah, I, I can speak to the monitoring, okay. and he could probably do the travel issues. We have been intensively monitoring the virus and the disease it causes around the world, including southern hemisphere countries. So far, the virus is the same. It hasn't mutated. It's the same as what we have and what we had last spring. Could you name a couple of those countries just so we Yes, know. Um, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Argentina, Chile, um, the, uh, those are countries where there's been a lot of information. Peru, um, I may be forgetting a few. Um, so we, we actually have people and partnerships in a number of countries. And at flu.gov, we've released, uh, HHS has released a report on the Southern Hemisphere that describes, you know, the assessment of what we saw there and how that can help us anticipate what we're going to have this fall, knowing okay. that the health systems might be different. The, the right question is, are you going to, if, if you see that it's a pandemic level there, are you going to, are you going to restrict the, travel? Yeah, is, there, that, is that an option? There's, there's not a plan for any travel okay. restrictions. At this point, the U.S. has as much or more disease than anyone else does. We are strongly encouraging others okay. not to restrict travel of Americans, and we are not intending to restrict travel t elsewhere. We think it's so important for people who are sick to not travel and for people who are sick to stay home and not spread their illness, but we don't think that one country is a riskier place than another right now. Unfortunately, the virus is all over the world. Okay. Thank you. Um, Secretary Blank, very quickly, I'm running out of time here. I um, also want to follow up with regards to Congressman uh, Schrader's remarks with regards to uh, Getting a better handle on the name of the flu. Are you working with the national media to see once if those folks would try and not use other words other than H1N1? Are you, are you briefing those people and you, are you keeping track of uh, their lack of doing that? I think CDC is involved with this quite okay. closely. All right. Yeah, we've been working intensively with the media this summer to try to ready, their, ready them to help with the fall uh, outbreaks. We've had workshops and tabletops and so forth, we have discussed the name issue. I think their view is the name has stuck and many of them are trying to use the H1N1 term that we're using consistently, but uh, I don't think we'll be able to convince the headline writers. Well, how, would you, how do you think we ought to address that problem? Because, I mean, this is it's significantly impacting the, the, uh, the, the pork industry, so we need to, 
I, you, know, you know, one just thing, to let them get away with it and say, well, uh, they're doing their best. I mean, is that good enough? Well, one thing that we are monitoring is, is understanding of the population. There have been several polls to try to understand, are people not eating pork? Or, are some of those factors happening? And we think we're actually winning with the American public's understanding. So I think that's probably going to be um, more helpful. But I, I do think it's very important to look at all the economic consequences. Don't you think it would be wise, though, that you have a meeting once a week, once a month with uh, the national media folks and say, hey, we, on your, in your articles following up on this, yeah. this, this disease, you, we noticed that uh, a number of times that you were in, incorrectly using uh, the name of uh, the slang name for this flu. It's an important point and one that we should continue to emphasize. So I'll make sure that our public affairs offices are are aware and 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 do uh, you know continue to push? We are all coordinated in our use of the H1N1 moniker and away from other names, um, and so we'll continue to to push on that. 